It's 3.30 in the morning. Spirit has me up and this is the metal hour. And two things happen when you get up this early. One is because you are um, future living, where you're worried about something, worried about the future, and so you're stressed. So your metal element is meddling with you. And the other part is that spirit has you up because your metal element is in full potential of finding purpose and work and this um, vision. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to say that's the optimal because I actually am uh, quite lively right now and lots of ideas in the head and I have to ground them and I have to write it out. And so this is also when I talk to spirit. I have multiple cups. And I invite my ancestors to tea, kind of calling my own board meeting. And this morning they said, because it is the beginning of Lent, to start my new 40-day devotional. And you know, I'm also doing 60 days on the Skinny 60 program. I'm in 100 days of my cold bath or cold therapy in which I do either the bath or the shower for two minutes and I'm singing Let There Be Peace on Earth. Like, I can't take on another challenge or journey. <laughs> and not, you know, there's all these sequences. And it's like, all right, it's the beginning of Lent. So let this be a new season of devotion. And Lent is 40 days. 40 days. And there's a reason for that. There's a lot of um, other religions and cultures that have a significance to 40. So this morning, Spirit says that there's a lot of people awakening and that this year is a rapid lightning year of changes so many and for us to not get um lost in the story or the ego or the outcome and really come back to center being heart-centered so um when i was waking up from from my spiritual stuff i thought i was going crazy I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I tried to figure it out because of my metal element. It's like, oh, I need to keep things just on the surface. I can't let other people really see what's going on underneath. But that doesn't help anybody. And when you're in this process, it could be a beautiful journey or it could be one of fear. And I hope that I help you embrace your beautiful journey and the right answers for you. There are lots of teachers out there. Do not give away your power to anything but have it as information and see if it aligns for you and then just practice as you practice your skills will develop the right teachers will show up and you will be in alignment and they will open you up not necessarily in their method but finding your own method incorporating um their method to yours and really growing together okay so um, this is just part of my process and for me just to play as this new chapter and this new door is opening for me because even though you awaken, you never just get there. No, 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 no. And there's many parts of it that will challenge you, that will help you grow. But in these 40 days of devotion, we're going to come back to spirit and we're going to explore some other modalities. But just for 40 days, because we want to keep it simple and we want to see results. I ask that you journal it to see the things that happen because it will reveal itself to you within the matter of three to seven days where things will sync up and then things will have to fade off because you're making space. The new container cannot hold some of the old things that you have. So in these 40 days of devotion, I am devoted to helping you remember who you are, helping me remember who I am, and doing it in a fun, delicious way and relaxed way. Okay, so whatever form that you want, come back to this and let this be a message for you. I'm going to be going live daily on Instagram at 7-11, at 7-11, where we're just doing two things. 
we're going to do the spiritual hygiene to cleanse our spiritual hygiene in which I just lead you through a series of questions and you say yes and then we do the honopono for two minutes for ourselves to forgive ourselves so that we can move forward the reason you want to forgive yourself is because then you become whole and then when you become whole and you are healed and this is part of the healing process because you never stop healing but healing has to be done with depth and play depth and play if it's all deep it's going to be overwhelming Okay, but we have to forgive ourselves for the mistakes that we feel like we made, the shame, the guilt, the worry, all the above. And the Honopono is a Hawaiian ritual in which there's only four parts to it. I love you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. And thank you. You can say it in any sequence, any order. And you can do this for other people that you want to forgive but most importantly i believe that you need to forgive yourself first okay and then you can move on so lent 40 days and i know you're probably like i'm not religious religion is really funny um find a way in which it speaks to you spiritually and i think that you might find more peace with that instead of like rebelling against it all there's parts of it, you know, that you're not going to totally agree with. And maybe this is a time for you to come back to it. I grew up Vietnamese Catholic. And um, now, I mean, I love Jesus. Rockstar Jesus, especially. And I'll show you a picture of Rockstar Jesus in a bit. Um, it's the new version of Jesus with like, there's all these rays coming to him. <laughs> And we call it Rockstar Old Jesus because of years ago when it was first introduced. My um, brother, Tan, told me that my mom would be giving us all of these things because uh, these pictures of him. <laughs> um, so it's really a Christ consciousness, a Christ consciousness, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, and so... For me, Lent always reminds me of Christ consciousness, and I've been wearing this for a while, um, like right here in my throat, to keep me in that awareness and that knowing and seeing and devotion and giving and serving. Okay, so whatever it is for you, if you don't like the cross, pick another symbol. But if you do, let that be your anchoring piece. Okay, um, so I also love this. It's Mother Mary, and um, I love all the Marys, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, and in, on this cup I have, I am in perfect health, and I am whole. So, the new moon that just passed, and also um, the first day of Chinese New Year's, the Lunar New Year, um, I asked people if they wanted to make a wish, and I would put it into my altar, and which then we can all heal together and um, all the wishes help co-create for each other. So many people wished for health and wealth. Health is your greatest wealth. Health is your greatest wealth. And um, this cup was a cup that I got last year with my mom at this one church. It's called the Mother of Caprini. It's up in Golden. Um, and on the back of it here, it says, let not your heart be disturbed. Do not fear sickness, nor any other anguish. Am I not here who am your mother? Are you not under my protection? Am I not your help? Are you not happily within my fold? What else do you wish? Do not grieve nor be disturbed by anything. And so I put in, at that time, I am in perfect health and I am whole because last year was my huge year of um, healing. And my word for the year was devotion because I was going to be devoted to my healing and others' healings. 
So I'm sending mother energy to you. And I want to tell you a story that I learned and also a lesson that I learned from my shaman this last weekend. I have been going to his healing circle for almost a year now. And I know he, he's talked about the fragmentation before. Um, maybe like four or five times. And I've always like had a um, like stir to it. I'm like, oh yes. And I write it down each time. But I didn't truly get it until this healing circle. And so just because you hear a message once doesn't mean that you get it right away. And it's through practice and constant reminder and reinforcement. And so what he talks about is the soul and how it comes being whole. And as we go through life and our traumas, we fragment and we go into survival mode, which forms that trauma. And so it's breaking a piece off of us. When that piece is healed, our soul wants to reclaim itself our remembrance and taking it back to become one again because it fragmented, so it's coming back. So this fragmentation is the, uh, or coming back, reclaiming yourself is so vital so that we can be whole. I don't know if I explained that right. I'm gonna have to reread my notes again. I get it. I am very sensory where sometimes I get it, but it's hard for me to explain it. And so we are here with the Honopono to reclaim our fragmented self. The Honopono will help you reclaim your fragmented self. All right. Um, so I'm going to lead you through it for just two minutes. And what I want you to do is perhaps holding your hand to your heart or maybe to your heart and your belly. You can close your eyes if you want to or you can keep it open. And you just follow me after I say it. And I want you to just hold maybe that inner child anywhere from ages five to seven and invite that inner child to come and play with you, to come out and tell it's safe, that it's here, or maybe other parts of you that you feel was very traumatic. Maybe they were the teenage years. Maybe it was in your 20s, whatever it was. Maybe it was that year of healing. The trauma can be healing with a disease. It could be with a relationship and just forgiving yourself for whatever decision that you made and that you made the best decision at that time. And now it's time to move on. You don't have to relive it. Just sending love to your soul, however that looks to you. Okay. So beforehand, I'm going to do a spiritual hygiene prayer. And you just say yes to it. Yeah, you just say yes because um, this is a method that I learned from um, Grandmaster David Harris and I use it for everything. In like getting parking, in um, a situation being better for me. But this situation, this here is the spiritual hygiene aspect where we're removing resistance, spiritual damage, emotional damage, um, energetic damage, physical, emotional, and the wuji. Something magical happens just so ever so lightly in the, the slight shift. And then um, when I say thank you, you say thank you. So we'll do the spiritual hygiene first to cleanse our soul and our spirit, removing the resistance, and then we're going to fill it back up with the Honopono. All right. And yes, my face is very shiny. It's because I have castor oil on it. And um, I uh, use my Monta eye mask that's heated, and so I put that on, and so it's kind of like a castor oil pack for my eyes. Because as you know, I have very light sensitive eyes and also tired eyes and dry eyes. <laughs> and I boost my eyes up every day with the daily eye routine and then add castor oil pack if I can. And also this helps me with my meditation. I also have a castor oil on my belly. Yeah. So look up castor oil pack. It helps you with the detoxing. I put a drop of oil in my belly button and then the castor oil pack and you can make your own, but they are so freaking messy. And so I got this one from Amazon. And um, I like it because it also has a pocket right here. And then I um, have a stone right there for my belly. <laughs> Do whatever is good for you, not what you're called to. And let me just tell you, healing isn't always pretty. I look like a hot mess and it's 
I put on things that have meaning to me, so I compound them sometimes. Like, I'll put on a, a beanie that my friend made me, you know, whatever I was given out of love or whatever experience um, that I got that uh, somewhere and then I bought an item. And I'll just fill it up <laughs> certain stones. And so, anyways, yes, my castor oil pack. I will do this when we do the Honopono. So I'm just going to put that on. So I want you to sit back and relax right now and then just say yes to the questions um, from the uh, um, the, uh, the spiritual prayer, okay? You don't have to do anything at all. So grab your drink. Mm. And I'm drinking a, mata, uh, a matcha latte um, with almond milk and rose flavoring and vanilla flavoring and just a little bit of honey. Yeah. Mm. This to me is joy and bliss. Okay. And uh, the cup that I'm drinking out of it says, do all things with love. Do all things with love. All right. So, <sighs> breathing in two, holding for four, and releasing, breathing out slower for six. Let's slow everything down. Breathing in two. Holding for four. Breathing out for six. Get centered. Come to your senses. Welcoming all of it in because it's all the symphony of now. What do you see? Maybe it's a scene from yesterday or this week that's either joy or maybe it's something of discomfort that you're worried about. Maybe it's a fight with someone, an argument. What do you hear? What do you taste? What do you smell? And what do you feel? Just letting it all come into your senses and being mindful. Can you please remove the resistance in our bodies? Say yes, yes. Will you please remove the resistance in our bodies? Yes. Please remove the resistance in our bodies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please remove the spiritual damages in our bodies? Yes. Will you please remove the spiritual damages in our bodies? Yes. Please remove the spiritual damages in our bodies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please remove the emotional damages in our bodies? Yes. Will you please remove the emotional damages in our bodies? Yes. Please remove the emotional damages in our bodies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please remove the physical damages in our bodies? Yes. Will you please remove the physical damages in our bodies? Yes. Please remove the physical damages in our bodies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please remove the energetic damages in our bodies? Yes. Will you please remove the energetic damages in our bodies? Yes. Please remove the energetic damages in our bodies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please remove the other damages in our bodies? Yes. Will you please remove the other damages in our bodies? Yes. Please remove the other damages in our bodies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you and smile. So now I'm going to lead you through the Honopono and you just repeat after me and we're going to do about two minutes of it. And I pro you may cry and if you do that's totally great. And here we are forgiving ourselves. I love you. I love you. Please forgive me. 
Thank you. I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. 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 Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I love you. Please forgive me. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Please forgive me. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I love you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Please forgive me. I love you. Please forgive me. Breathe in deeper. Exhale slower. And allow for the stillness to be within you. In the stillness, you will find your answers. You connect to your soul. Let this be an act of devotion for yourself. And in healing yourself, you heal for the collective. As one person heals, we heal others. Smile. It means you already have it. It is a state of gratitude. Now, witness yourself in the states of bliss that is in true you. What would that feel like? For me, it's peace. Now, what are three things that you are thankful for or grateful for or appreciate or one thing of each? What you appreciate, appreciates. When you're thankful of something, you're in the present moment as well in what you have. When you're grateful for something, you're 
you're yeah, grateful that it happened and that it's over. <laughs> They're actually little bit different essences. So play with each of those. Right now, I appreciate the weather and the that we have heat in my home and all of my friends that um, are supportive and family that are supporting the people that are showing up and also just truth. I appreciate truth. I'm thankful for um, our sanitary system, like the toilets <laughs> and hot water pressure and water and a home and food. I'm thankful for the food bank that I've been getting food from. I'm thankful for my teachers. I'm grateful for the lessons that I'm learning. I'm grateful for um, my colitis because it taught me a lot and surrendering. As we cleanse our spirit this way, it's actually a more yin way of doing things. It actually expands us. So it doesn't really remove anything. It expands so then it can dissolve on its own. The layers and layers that have been underneath, it shifts from having to do something so abruptly to clean it, to like clean. And I use those words before because it helps people understand because that's what we've been trained uh, to remove it. But energy can't be removed. It can be transformed. And so here we're shifting to expansion so that it can energetically dissolve. And then it's purified and then you move on and you wouldn't have it any other way that you needed all of that to be the person that you are today. So have a wonderful day and um, let me know what you felt. I would love to know. I love hearing from you. And also when you put it in there on the grid, it helps another person heal. So may you be free. May you find peace. And may you have grace and courage.